Okay, let's talk about Habibi New York. They are a fragrance brand. They reached out to me. They wanted to send me a number of their fragrances to review. And that's what we are doing today. So I have five full bottles here. They had me go through and hand select the ones that looked most interesting to me. That's what I did. And they're all a little bit different from each other, which is pretty cool. So there should be a little bit of something for everyone. And we're gonna do a little giveaway. We got two discovery sets, one for men and one that they call the Oud Collection. So stay tuned to figure out how to win. Alrighty, so these are mostly gonna be in order from my least favorite to my most favorite based on my taste. But whatever sounds interesting to you, definitely check it out. This first one up is called Urban Oud. I think this might be one of their newer releases. Not from this year, maybe from last year or the year before. This fragrance I have an interesting relationship with because there's something in here that reminds me of my childhood. I can't place it. You know, scent is very powerful, especially when it relates to memory. So I can't really explain it to you, but I get a visceral experience with this. I can't say this is my favorite one. Like I said, this is at the bottom here for me, but it is a profile that I think a lot of people would enjoy. It is very, very spicy and hot. I get a hot, spicy profile here. I see the color red when I smell this. And you'll see in the presentation of these fragrances, they do come in some beautiful boxes. This one does happen to feature a lot of red in the colorway. Perhaps that influenced me, but either way it matches. It smells hot. It's definitely a little sweet. It's definitely woody, but not overly oody. I get way more spices, almost akin to something like Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf, but it is not Spice Bomb, don't get me wrong. You get a lot of spices in here, like pink pepper, nutmeg, and cardamom mixed with some citrus. Primarily, I get a lot of mandarin orange, which really screams, with some woods in the background, with a little bit of leather in there, and there is a warm, ambery sweetness definitely in the background, but primarily I get red hot spices with slightly fresh citrus. This is the one I would say that reminds me the most of some design fragrances that I've tried. It does smell a notch higher in quality to me than your average design fragrance, but the profile itself does not scream as something terribly different. It is reminiscent, but it's also not exactly like anything. So if you like the idea of a very hot, spicy, slightly sweet and warm, woody fragrance, then Urban Oud might be one to check out. Easy to wear for the cooler months, something to wear maybe out at night. It's not overly formal. It does have a fun, playful vibe to it without being overly youthful and overly juvenile. That's Urban Oud. Up next, let's talk about White Moroccan Leather. This is probably my favorite bottle of them all. Just gorgeous. And honestly, I do have to say, I was just talking about presentation and you've seen it here on camera. Presentation is top notch here. I really am a sucker for good presentation, for great quality bottle, for great quality box, all that stuff. Not everyone cares and that's okay, but they have my attention when it's done right. It's done right here. Beautiful glass. I love the frosted quality. I love the design of the gold and I love the font and everything, the metal caps, really, really nice. Now, this fragrance is one that smells perfectly the way it sounds and even looks. The aesthetic is perfect. There's so much synchronicity here with how they package this together. This smells a little bit more like suede than leather. It's smooth, it's kind of milky and creamy. I'm gonna give myself the opening here. I've been smelling the dry down. It's a little sweet, almost in like a tonka bean or vanilla-like way. And it's a little bit soft. You have a suede-like leather mixing with orris. Orris making it a little bit buttery, a little bit powdery. You do have a little bit of freshness up top from some citrus and spice. That adds kick, that adds an, a lively nature to it so it's not just dense, rich, milky. There is a little bit of a lightness to it. But as it dries, it gets ambery and warm. Overall, a great blend, a simple fragrance. It does remind me of something else that I can't place. Beautiful quality. It, this one wears a little bit light. Do not expect this one to project out like a beast, but it will last on the skin. In fact, all of these I was getting at least eight, nine hours easy in terms of longevity, so you don't have to worry about it lasting on the skin. But this is a softer scent personality. It is a softer profile. It is something that's a little bit more elegant a little bit more understated, 
perhaps the most unisex of all the ones I'll be talking about. A great take on leather, very easy to wear, sweet, smooth leather. If you like the idea of that, white Moroccan leather might be the one to check out. All right, when I heard about the name of this, I knew I had to try it. Spiced Bergamot and Oris. An interesting combination, not one that I would think would go together in harmony in terms of Bergamot and Oris as the main players, but it works. In fact, it's in the air right now. This is one of the stronger ones for sure. You get a bitter, bright, mouth-watering citrus, which is bergamot, immediately backed by this slightly dusty, slightly powdery, smooth orris, smooth kind of rooty quality that just envelops the bergamot. It kind of broadens it, makes it take up more space, and it kind of rounds out the edges so it's not so sharp. There's a sharpness here for sure, but the oris calms things down and gives it more depth. I do get a bitter woodiness in the background, maybe from vetiver that balances things out. Brightness and like dry woods happening all at the same time, smoothed out by oris. This one is quite unique. When you first spray it on and you wear it for those first six hours or so, it may not really remind you of anything else, but as it dried on the skin, this is kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. It started to remind me a little bit of the dry down to some 1990s classic men's fresh designer fragrances. It has that type of dry down, that soapiness, that clean woodiness, musky. If you smell it, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to describe. There's something about that that I love. Everyone may not love that. That's not all it is, but that really stands out to me in the dry down. And I thought that was a surprise because it doesn't really smell anything like that when you first spray it on. So it does change quite a bit. But overall, a really pleasant wearing experience. Quite different, again, probably the most unique out of all of the ones I'll be talking about. That is Spiced Bergamot and Oris. Next one up, this one is nice. This one is an oud fragrance for those who might be afraid of oud. This is called Embrace. This was the first one I tried out of these. That's nice. If you can make an oud fragrance blue, like this bottle, that's what they did here. They added kind of a clean, almost shower gel vibe to a traditional oud rose feel, which is very different. You do get a lot of citruses, like mandarin orange sticks out the most to me. It is a sweeter, juicier citrus quality that is very fresh. But behind that freshness is a smooth, creamy richness, almost powdery, that makes the fragrance kind of thick. And definitely you get rose. So there's rose, the oud in here is at the base. It doesn't really scream that much until later, but the oud rose is working together in a way that you would expect if you smelled oud rose fragrances. It does have that familiar profile. Now Grace, my fiance, wasn't crazy about this one when I first had it on for the first few hours. It does have jasmine in the heart. That is pretty noticeable. I think it's really what adds to that kind of powdery, creamy fullness that the fragrance has. And she's just not a fan of jasmine, so that's a personal preference. As that faded, she actually really enjoyed this. I don't mind jasmine, so I enjoyed it the whole way through. Definitely one of my favorites for sure. As you can see, we're at the second spot of the five and I really enjoy Embrace. Easy to wear, kind of like an everyday fragrance, but in the form of an oud rose. Really nice, just gets sweeter and warmer and smoother as it dries. Embrace, I definitely recommend this if you're looking for something you could wear often. Check it out. And finally, my favorite so far by a small margin compared to Embrace, honestly. I think the margins get smaller as we go up here in the ranks. This is so different, not what I expected at all. This is called Desert Oud. And this is a fragrance of duality. I was expecting something warm, rich, ambery, oody, very traditional in terms of that characteristically, you know, Middle Eastern perfume profile. And it's here, but immediately something caught me off guard. I'm like, wait, okay, I get oud and rose, I get the ambery warmth, I get all that, but there's something fresh here. But it's not like aromatic, it's not citrus, it's green very green. There's a green leaves accord in here that does make it fresh indeed, but again, a strange duality because what they've done, at least in my experience, is they take the oud rose, the ambery richness of it, and they mix it with something like the original polo or polo modern reserve, this kind of green 
old school men's fragrance profile. It's going to be a lot more prominent on the paper than it is on the skin, but I noticed it on the skin for sure. And when it wears down, when it dries, that greenness, that profile actually comes to the forefront. It becomes a little bit less oody and more of that kind of green, masculine, old school feel which I was not expecting. Honestly, I don't think the name ties into it all that well, Desert Oud. I don't know what they were thinking when they threw in the green notes because it really overtakes the scent for me. It may be different for you on your skin, so keep that in mind. These are complex fragrances and your experience will vary because of that. But on me, this turns green. Not what I expected, but I actually really, really like it. It's very interesting, it's very unique. I've never smelled anything quite like this. This is something I may not wear all the time, but it does make it so that it's a more wearable oud for more occasions because it's a little bit fresher, but still has an oomph to it. So don't get me wrong. It still will portray itself as an oud fragrance, but one that is unlike almost any other I've tried. So I'm digging Desert Oud. This is currently my favorite again by just a little bit. So now it's time to enter into the giveaway. If you want to be one of the two winners of these discovery sets, all you gotta do, like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave a comment just saying which one of these five fragrances sounds the most interesting to you in a period of time. I'm not sure what the period is yet. I will select two winners at random from the comment section and I will respond to your comment telling you to contact me because you're a winner. So you know what to do. Go down below. Either way, I'd love to know what you guys think of these fragrances, if you've tried them or if you're just interested in them at this point. Let's talk about it down in the comments, but thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.